physical meaning of the wave function. Okay, so up to this point, we know that with the assumption of time invariant potential energy and using the separation of variable techniques, the Schrodinger equation can be separated into two ordinary differential equations, the time-dependent portion and the time-independent portion. The total wave function is shown to take the form as given here, where the small case psi of r is a function of position only, and uh, phi of t will always be in the form of exponential minus i omega t, where omega is equal to the total energy of a particle capital E divided by the reduced Planck constant. Since the total wave function is a complex valued function, unlike the electromagnetic waves, it is itself not measurable. We won't be able to measure a complex valued function. And remember, all the physical quantities, they must be real. They must be real numbers. So it cannot by itself represent a real physical quantity. I mean, the total wave function itself cannot represent a real physical quantity. So the question is, how can the wave function relate to real physical measurements on a system? To answer this question, Max Born, a German physicist, postulated in 1926 that the square of the absolute magnitude of the total wave function, given here, times a differential volume d cube r, represents the absolute magnitude, I'm sorry, the absolute probability of finding a particle in a volume element or a differential volume d cube r at a particular place specified by the position vector r and at a given time t. Therefore, the square of the absolute magnitude of the total wave function is a probability density function. It stands for the probability per unit length in 1D, or the probability per unit area in 2D, or the probability per unit volume in 3D of finding a particle or a body in a specific position and at a given time instant. Because a wave function is complex valued with both real and imaginary parts and a probability, however, must be a positive real quantity. The probability density, which is the absolute magnitude of the total wave function squared for a complex wave function is therefore taken as the product of the total wave function and the complex conjugate of itself. So we use the asterisk to indicate the complex conjugate. In a separable solution, we know that the total wave function is the product of the time-independent part and the time-dependent part, which is exponential to the minus i omega t, where omega is equal to the total energy of the particle divided by the reduced Planck constant. Because the product of exponential to the minus i omega t and its complex conjugate is equal to unity, the expression for probability density can be rewritten as shown here, where now we see that it is solely determined by the spatial part of the total wave function, and it is always a real and positive number. Since the probability density is independent of time, it is nothing to do with time in a separable solution. It is said to be stationary. This means that the probability density of finding a particle at any position in space is a constant. It doesn't change with time once the spatial part of the wave function is determined. The concept of probability density is illustrated in the figure shown here. The curve represents the probability density distribution or the probability density function along the x-axis. So you would be quite likely to find the particle in the vicinity of point A because 
its corresponding probability density there is the largest and relatively unlikely to find it near point B. The probability of finding a particle in the interval between A and B is the area under the graph, the square of the magnitude of the total wave function. If the probability density distribution is stationary, then the curve you see here, for example, doesn't change with time. It stays as it is forever. Note that since the probability function is independent of time, we will in general only be concerned with the time independent wave function, which is the spatial part of the total wave function given here. On this slide, as there is nothing new in the equation for the total wave function given here, I would like to put more emphasis on a fact that all quantum mechanics can offer is the statistical information about the possible results or the possible outcomes. Since everything is described in terms of the probability, nothing is deterministic and such indeterminacy has been deeply disturbing to or confusing physicists and philosophers alike. Remember, quantum mechanics is just a theory to describe nature. So basically, there are two possibilities that may result in the conclusion of determinacy. One is, if the theory itself has a defect, it can lead to an incorrect conclusion, which is indeterminacy of nature. The other is, yes, the nature exhibits indeterministic characteristic and quantum mechanics has already correctly found such indeterminacy. Nevertheless, everybody agrees the position of a particle or a body can be determined precisely in classical mechanics, but it has to be described in terms of the probability in quantum mechanics. 